In this video we are going to focus on useful tips you can use in your projects when working with Cinemachine version 3. We will look at Cinemachine Brain update methods, limiting rotations for a free look camera, slow motion rotation, free look modifier, swapping from a free look camera to a third person aim camera, using Cinemachine Impulse to affect objects, and using a target group camera. This is the fifth and final video in the Cinemachine series. In previous videos we have looked at Cinemachine basics and the type of cameras you can use. Cinemachine and timeline for animated sequences. 2D Cinemachine cameras for 2D games. Player controller cameras such as third person cameras and free look cameras. You can find links to those videos in the video description below. I will be using a range of scenes to demonstrate these tips in quick use cases, so following along is not necessary in this video. The Cinemachine Brain sets the update method of all Cinemachine cameras that are controlling this Unity camera. It can be set to use fixed update, late update, smart update or your own manual update. Let's take a look at the differences between these. In this scene I have a forklift with a script that is moving it based on the simple transform translate in the update method. It changes direction every 5 seconds back and forth. During play mode we can see a jitter motion as the Cinemachine camera tries to keep up with the forklift. The update method on the brain is set to a fixed update which is out of sync with the update method in the script causing this jitter motion. Changing this to late update now makes the movement smooth as it is now in sync with the update method in the script. I'll switch this forklift off and switch on the second forklift and set this as the tracking target. This forklift has a rigid body component and a box collider. I'll drag this fixed update move script on here. This is the same as the previous script only now it is moving the forklift using a simple rigid body move position inside of the fixed update method. During play mode we have smooth motion. The Cinemachine Brain is using a fixed update method that matches perfectly with the fixed update of the script. If I change this to late update it once again causes jitter as now the late update method is out of sync with the fixed update of the script. I can set smart update. This will detect how the tracking target is being moved and automatically adjust to a fixed update or a late update depending on how the tracking target is being moved. Smart update is what you want to use if you are using multiple Cinemachine cameras that are tracking multiple targets using a combination of update and fixed update methods. The smart update will automatically adjust to each target. I am using one of the characters from the Time Ghost project developed by Unity. I want to demonstrate how we can set up a camera rotation that is restricted just to the front of the character. To automatically assign an object as the tracking target, right click on the object you want to set as the Cinemachine tracking target. Then create the Cinemachine camera type, in this case a free look camera. I'll drag this down to the bottom of the hierarchy to ensure it's not parented to the character. Notice the TG HUD 5 is now being used as the tracking target. I only want to be able to rotate around the front part of the character but not around the back of the character. In the horizontal axis uncheck the wrap. This prevents the camera from wrapping around from left to right. By default this is what allows full 360 degree rotation on the horizontal axis. Then I want to restrict the range to minus 270 and minus 90. These values create a semicircle rotation just around the front of the character. Then I'll set the starting values to minus 180, so I'm looking straight at the character. For this I don't want any vertical rotation, so I'll set the range to 45 for both. To get closer to the character I'll set the radial axis to 0.75. Now I can adjust the target offset Y of the Cinemachine Rotation Composer, and the target offset Y of the Orbital Follow. During play mode I have restricted the rotation around the character, just to the front. Now let's look at how we can set up a camera rotation around the character moving in slow motion. I have a script that is setting the time scale of this scene to 0.2 to create the slow motion effect. This is added to the character. 
During play mode we have the character in slow motion. Notice that the camera is also rotating in slow motion. On the Cinemachine Axis controller of the free look camera, we can check the Ignore Timescale checkbox. During play mode the character is in slow motion, but now the camera rotates in real time. We are now going to look at how we can use the Cinemachine free look modifier to change the values of the free look camera during vertical rotation. I will change the vertical axis range to minus 10 and 45 to get vertical rotation. I'll set the starting values to zero, so we are looking straight at the character. When you create a free look camera, it has the free look modifier added by default, but it is switched off. Switch this on to use it. The free look camera has a three ring orbit style. The camera can orbit up and down between the three rings. Modifiers allow you to change the camera settings at the top and bottom rings for interesting effects. Press plus to add modifiers. There are a range to choose from. I'll start with lens. This allows you to change the depth of field, clipping planes and Dutch angle when the camera is at the top or bottom rings. I'll set the bottom to use a depth of field of 45 to get a zoom in. We see the preview in the game view. Then I'll add composition. Now I can change camera position, dead zones and art limits at top and bottom. I'll change screen position on Y for the bottom to 0.3 to lift up the camera position a bit. Then I'll add distance, which allows you to change the camera distance to the target at top and bottom. I'll set 4 at the bottom to get much closer to the character. During play mode I've got an interesting range of motion when rotating around the character. Instead of trying to change values in the components of the Cinemachine camera inside your scripts, it is much easier to switch between cameras that have different settings setups. This achieves the same effect but with much less coding. Cinemachine cameras have a very low impact on computer performance, so you can use multiple Cinemachine cameras within your scene with very little difference to your frame rates. Here I have two free look cameras using different values. I want to change between them with a left mouse click. I have a script that stores two Cinemachine cameras. It sets the priority of the first camera to one in the start method. The camera with the highest priority becomes active, so this ensures camera 1 is the active camera when the scene starts. It listens for a left mouse click, then makes the priority of camera 2 higher, making that active, or changing back by setting the priority of camera 1 higher. On the main Unity camera I have placed the script, I have the input system actions asset in the first slot, and the two Cinemachine cameras in the next two slots. During play mode I left click and I get the nice blend to the new Cinemachine camera settings with very little code. Click again to go back to camera 1. You can also do this to change between camera views for playable characters. Here I have a third person aim camera. I'll drag this into the camera 2 slot. Now with the left click I can change from a top down view to a third person view very easily. You may also want to swap targets, once again this can be easily achieved using multiple Cinemachine cameras. Here I have two third person aim cameras. One is targeting the original player armature. The other is targeting this duplicate copy of the player armature. These cameras have been added to the change camera script. During play mode, with a left click, I can easily change characters. You can use presets to save component settings. This is useful if you want to reuse these same values with multiple characters. With the values set up the way you want them, click on the presets icon. Double click the create new option to save them. Select the preset for the next camera with the same component and the values update. This can save lots of time. I have set up a scene with a heavy ball that will drop to the ground and cause these cubes to shake on impact. We have previously looked at making the camera shape by adding a Cinemachine Impulse Listener in the third video looking at 2D cameras. You can create camera shake in any project, 2D and 3D, but you can also make object shake in the same way. I can add a Cinemachine Impulse Source script to this sphere. On each of these boxes I can now add a Cinemachine external impulse listener. 
This will allow these objects to listen for an impulse source and will affect each object. You can set different values on each object if you want a more random feel. I have a script that generates the impulse from an onCollisionEnter method. That script is attached to the sphere. During gameplay we get the boxes jump up when the sphere hits the ground. You can also test the impulse during gameplay for fast iteration and development. During gameplay I can generate an impulse by clicking the Invoke button. Now I can test out different settings, perhaps an explosion or a rumble. The impulse type can be used to produce different effects for a group of objects. Uniform will affect all objects at the same time. Dissipating and propagating affects the objects in the wave, starting either at the front or the back. In the scene, I have duplicated the player character. There is a player 1, which has all the scripts switched on. The other is player 2, with all the scripts switched off. Add a target group camera. This is used when you want a camera to focus on multiple targets instead of just one. This is really useful, for example, for fighting games. Each player has a player camera root, which is an empty game object positioned at the character's head. This helps the target group to accurately measure the size of this target. Drag each player camera root into the slots. The radius represents the approximate size of the target, so that the entire target gets considered when calculating the bounding box of the group, and not just its root point. The weight controls how important each target is. When the weights are equal, it tries to keep both targets on screen when the camera moves. If one weight is greater than the other, then the higher weight target is more important and will always be in the camera shot. A group framing camera is a Cinemachine camera with a group framing extension and whose target is a Cinemachine group. A group is a collection of targets with sizes which the Cinemachine camera treats as a single unit. When this is switched on, this component is now handling the tracking of the targets. Framing size is used to move closer or further away. It has a bounding box which the group framing extension uses to keep all the members of the group in the shot. It does this by a combination of camera repositioning, camera rotation and camera zooming to maintain the desired screen composition of the group. You can control each of these mechanisms in the Group Framing Inspector. The camera dollies out to keep both players on screen. Then dollies back in as they approach each other. In the scene view we can see the bounding box which is resized to keep both targets on screen. Throughout this series we have looked in detail at using Cinemachine in a variety of ways. Find the links to the other videos in this series from the video description below. And that brings us to the end of this video and to the end of this series. For more information see the Unity documentation. Thanks for watching.